The antechamber, I think, is the uh, beginning that uh, Howard Carter faced. Uh, one day, uh, there is a, a young boy in the age of 12, his name is Hussein, and uh, Hussein uh, brought the, the water on a jar, and they put the jar on the ground. Uh, Hussein found the entrance, and he ran to uh, Howard Carter to tell him that he found the tomb. When Howard Carter came, he said, that's it. This is the entrance of the tomb. He was looking for five years to discover the tomb. Howard Carter found inside the tomb of Tutankhamun almost 5,398 objects. But there are some unique objects, like the Golden Throne. The Golden Throne actually never traveled, never left Egypt, because uh, I think the curators in the Cairo Museum, when they choose 55 objects to travel in the 70s, they said the Golden Throne has to stay. It's really a masterpiece. I personally like it because of that scene that show the queen is leaning with love and affection on King Tut. And it has a Marna style and the Thebian style and the inscriptions and really it is something uh, beautiful that I, it shows the, the beauty of art uh, on the tomb itself. Uh, the wishing cup, which is uh, a beautiful masterpiece uh, of art, it has inscriptions. If you go to his cemetery in London, you will read the inscriptions. And this to show maybe because this piece was very near to his heart. And the third piece that I like is the mannequin. The mannequin people love. Uh, it's also another portrait of Tutankhamun. Howard Carter liked to call it the mannequin. Uh, it could be mannequin, but I really believe it's a beautiful uh, portrait uh, of the king. This is actually the three pieces that I like to talk always about what Howard Carter found in the ancient chamber, among others. But this are the three, when I think of the antechamber, it comes to my eyes, these three beautiful objects. The burial chamber is amazing because also of the scenes that found in it. How they drag the mummy by the princess. And you have seen of I opening the mouth of the king. I open your mouth, then you can eat, and your nose, then you can smell, and your ear, then you can here, that to show that the second king after him was I. And therefore, I really believe that these beautiful scenes showing King Tut in the burial chamber in front of other gods and goddesses is really amazing. The burial chamber, in my opinion, is wonderful. And to show how Carter was a good archaeologist, he did not get in in the first day. He waited three years until he can work in the others, in the treasury room and the others, until he can open the sarcophagus. And this to show how he was really a great archaeologist. I respected him a lot. And this is why I changed his rest house to be a museum, because I respect this man. He stayed 10 years restoring and recording and photographing the 398 objects found inside the tomb. King Tut uh, died suddenly. Uh, I found out that uh, he died in the age of 19. And because of the sudden death, the tomb was so small. The, in my opinion, that was prepared for I. And I gave this tomb uh, for the burial of Tutankhamun. Because in the tomb of Tutankhamun, you have one scene, which is the first hour of this book called the Imidwat means what is in the netherworld. Then uh, the same scene you will see it in the tomb of I. And I really believe that that was first for I, he gave it to Tutankhamun and the tomb in the West Valley uh, was prepared actually for King Tut and used for I later. When I came to the tomb of Tutankhamun and I took the, cof, the third coffin out, I had a beautiful moment in my life, meeting King Tut face to face looking at his back teeth. That's when I began to examine the mummy for the first time. I put it under the CT scan. And what's amazing, the CT scan was brand new. 
But when I put the mummy underneath the CT scan, the machine stopped for no reason. And that was the first time in my life to think that something could be called the curse of Tutankhamun. Why the machine stopped? After one hour, the machine did work. And I found out that uh, Tutankhamun died in the age of 19. That idea that people thought he was murdered because of that hole in the back of the head. It was opened in Dynasty 18 to put the liquid for mummification, but I found a fracture in the left leg. It's an accident happened to him two hours before he died. We found out that the blood doesn't go to his fingers and the feet, and he suffered from malaria. In his tomb found 130 sticks because he used them to walk and stand. And even when he shot wild animals, seated, not standing, like every king. The burial chamber itself, if you look at the sarcophagus, inside this sarcophagus, there were three coffins. Then it's amazing they have to put other artifacts inside. But the most beautiful ones, in my opinion, was the three coffins. Beautiful. It is a masterpiece. I don't think that anything like this existed. And this is why in this exhibit, they're showing the three coffins beautifully, how the three coffins were topped the mummy. Then the tomb is very small. They have to push the 5,300 artifacts inside. As we know that the mummy was topped with uh, three coffins. And the middle one is the most amazing one because it's made of solid gold. I think about 243 pounds of gold. Because gold in Egypt was like dust. If you look at every coffin, it has the vulture and the copra for protection. And you have the false beard for the king. And you have the crook and the flyer. Because this is the symbol of kingship. Without that, you will not be a king. And therefore, in every coffin, you have the same because it represents the king as a ruler, not only for today, but for the afterlife. Then now, King Tut has become a god, and therefore, the transition from him as a king and to the, to the mummy is showing that he became Osiris in the afterlife. And all these type of inscriptions are a hieroglyphic inscription to help the deceased king to go safely to the afterlife. And now the mummy is saved completely underneath because this for him will live for eternity, forever, as a god. The treasury room in the tomb of Tutankhamun is amazing because of the uh, Anubis shrine that uh, it's the masterpiece in this tomb that everyone recognized. And this is how Lord Carnavon died five months after the discovery. Lots of speculation about the curse of Tutankhamun and the curse of the pharaohs occurred and they even created false uh, information and the inscriptions about this Anubis shrine. The sarcophagus is still in the tomb. It is a masterpiece. I actually had lots of work to do with this sarcophagus because I opened it and I found inside the three coffins. The shrines is really amazing of how Howard Carter was able to take all the shrines out of the tomb and how it was restored beautifully because it shows how this is the palace for the king for the afterlife. And therefore, the beautiful scenes are kind of scenes that will help the deceased to go safely to the afterlife. Because the most important thing for any king is his journey to the afterlife. How he will, will fight the wild creatures and until he can go to meet Osiris in the afterlife. We can see a beautiful scene in one of the shrines showing Neftis, Osiris, are really protecting the king. The other goddesses and how all these scenes that could be from books that written in the walls to show how the shrines are actually protecting and keeping the king safely for his journey. The golden mask is a masterpiece. It is the most beautiful artifact or object 
ever found in any place in the world. When Howard Carter opened the mummy, and he found that the golden mask is, con is touched completely with the head because of the reasons. It seems that because of the body of Tutankhamun was put in the sarcophagus quickly, they had to put resins. And that resins made the task to be connected directly on the face. He tried to take it. He couldn't. Then what he did, he took the mummy outside of the tomb and put it under the sun. It never melted. Then he took the mummy to the tomb of Siti II that was a store for the objects of Tutankhamun, and he brought tools, and he put the tools in fire, and he took the golden mask out. Because of that, he damaged the mummy actually to 18 pieces. The only good part in the mummy was the face. I wrote a book called The Treasure of the Tomb, I found out that Carter did the best way. There was no way for him to leave the mask on the, uh, on the face of the mummy. And therefore, look at the mask. It has exactly the realistic face of the king. This mask traveled once, but it cannot travel again because this is the most precious object. We are going to show this mask in the Grandi Museum that will open soon in 2020. The mask by itself will be in a special room that the world will come to witness that mask. This exhibit is the most beautiful educational exhibit. It can tell the people to learn about the discovery, to learn about archeology, span to learn about every piece can touch the hearts of everyone. It was made to show archaeology, to show the discovery, to show the curse. It's an amazing exhibit that the children will never forget. When even they come and they look at this replica of the mask, it is exactly like the original one. Actually, it is the only mummy that remain in the Valley of the Kings because Howard Carter moved all the mummies of kings and queens from the Valley of the Kings that has names. But he left all the mummies that has no names. But the only mummy with a name that he left in the valley was the mummy of Tutankhamun. And in my opinion, the reason, because the mummy is completely damaged. This is why he wanted to leave it in the tomb. Because the tomb of Amun Hutub II, the mummy was found inside the sarcophagus. But he moved the mummy. And therefore, I think the only reason that Howard Carter did not move the mummy was because of the damage that he did when he tried to remove the golden mask. I found out that the mummy was in danger because of the briefing of the tourists and also the dust. When I came to the tomb, I moved the mummy from the sarcophagus. I put it in a showcase that I brought it from Germany that has temperature to protect the mummy. Then any tourist now who will go to the Valley of the Kings, enter inside the tomb of Tutankhamun, will be able to see the face of the golden boy. And that face has magic and mystery. It will capture the heart of anyone who will enter the tomb of Tutankhamun.